What's up, mud men? This is Steven, Josh, and Ben with another episode of Phantology. We're covering Artemis Fowl, the movie, the blockbuster success. You've seen it, you love it, or maybe not, but this is a special <laughs> special roast edition because honestly, no one liked this movie, right? <laughs> ben, Josh, you guys loved it? I have been sitting and waiting to reveal my opinion about this. I've been silently waiting. So I will remain silent for Did a little secretly, bit. Did you secretly you secretly liked it? I'm gonna remain silent. A oh little my bit gosh. Longer. We if you had a positive opinion, this this podcast is about to get pretty entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Here I'll I'll maybe take away Ben's hot take a little bit. I thought it was better than how a lot of people thought it was. Until I was talking with my wife about it and I was like, you know, for a kid's movie, it wasn't bad. And they started thinking about all the kids' movies, the ki- the movies that were made from kids' properties that I actually liked. And the two that came to mind were um, the recent Golden Compass TV series and the recent series of Unfortunate Event- Events Netflix series. Yeah, both of those took properties that were geared to that were initially geared towards the same type audience that Artemis Fowl was, and leaned into the a little bit darker, grittier aspect of it without making it just like a straight up, you know, like polluting the property by making it way too adult. And so I, I was going to come in with a hot take, but then I thought about those two off the right before coming in to record. And I was like, no, I can't even justify the hot take. And compare it to like a Disney property, like Onward, for example, Onward was a great kids movie. It had a, you know, beginning, middle, end. it was awesome. It kept you captivated the entire time, kind of leaned into the fantasy elements. It was, it was awesome in every, in every way. Right. And gosh, Artemis Fowl was bad. Okay, let's hear your let's let's hear your rant, Stephen. I know you're ready for it. I mean, should we do like a typical plot walkthrough, or is there not enough of plot for you to walk through? Nope. There's no. I have some notes <laughs> of special, super bad points that I'd like to hit, but we're not doing the plot. We're not doing the plot walkthrough. We're not subjecting people to that. If you want the plot <laughs> rock, walkthrough, I mean, listen to our first review of the book and then combine it with some of the second book, and I guess you have the plot. So. Here's how I'm going to describe the first book. So it was directed by the guy who played Gilderoy Lockhart in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I think his name is Kenneth Branagh, something like that. Anyway, basically, this movie is, it's like if you need a forgetfulness charm or something from Gilderoy Lockhart, here it is bottled up in a movie, watch the movie, you're not going to remember any of it, or you will because it was so bad. It seriously has affected my capacity to remember things. It's affected the hippocampus part of my brain. That's how bad it was. So thank you, <laughs> Professor Lockhart. Listen, I don't wow. think it was that bad, guys. I mean, come on. Listen, think about like Spy Kids. That's the movie I was comparing it to, okay? This is a movie that's geared towards a 10-year-old boy audience, and they're going to eat it up, okay? This is a movie that was put out during quarantine that kids could put on for their for their kids that are running around and they're gonna love it how does that make it a good movie just because it was put out during quarantine no i think it makes it a good movie because it was appealing to the audience that it was appealing to look at you guys are making it play a game that it was never intending to play okay you want plot it wasn't playing a plot game okay you want serious Dialogue. But the book has a good a plot. A good, a good, a good version of this of this movie exists in the book. The plot from the book was good, and it appealed to that audience. So the fact that they cobbled this together into a movie made it so bad. So here's the question, Stephen: Was this movie? And I, I seriously am wondering this: Was this movie targeting our age group that grew up reading the books, or was this movie targeting the current ten year olds that like? they hope are going to read the books. Definitely the current. I don't know, but is there a difference? There's still the, is there a difference between us when you were 10 and the current 10 year olds? Like, well, no, still kind of like the same type of things. Well, yeah, but for us, I mean, you think about most media is geared towards our age group, like 18 to like 34 or something is like what almost all movies are made for. Like think about the entire MCU. They took an entire, okay. entire properties that we grew up watching as cartoons and then like expertly made it into like the biggest blockbuster franchise of all time because of our age group, you know? So we're being catered to right now for like the next couple of years and for the last 10 years or so. 
and so I don't know if this movie was made for us. It was made for, like Ben was saying, it was made for a 10 year old kid now. And maybe they haven't read the books. And if you haven't read the book, I think that one thing that this movie did, it captured the feeling of the books pretty well. Like having just read the first book for the first time. Steven's face. I want to screen grab. How the feeling of the book is the total opposite feeling that you get from no watching way. this movie. Okay. I'm okay with departure from the book material, but no, gosh, the feeling of the book was, co- was completely different than the movie. In the book, Artemis kidnaps Holly, holds her for ransom for his personal gain. He's an actual criminal mastermind. In the movie, he becomes friends with these people within minutes of the kidnapping. And then at the end has this stupid line where he says, I'm Artemis Fall and I'm a criminal mastermind. What crimes have you masterminded, Artemis? <laughs> so so in terms of the friendship with Holly, I was kind of watching this throughout the day on Saturday because I couldn't justify setting down for an hour and a half while, you know, like to watch it. So I kind of just <laughs> had it on in snippets. So I was like, wait, did I like just leave it playing while I um, like was doing something else? Did I just like forget to hit pause? And then I rewound because I'm like, now that suddenly they're like friends. And then I went back. I'm like, no, I just watched all this. He had her in a cage. It made zero sense. It made zero sense. I think that they were supposed to bond over the fact that they, both of them had missing fathers. And then yeah. because of that, now they could yeah, trust exactly. each other. Exactly. Meaningful dialogue. And plus- So this, this is whole... a Batman versus Superman. We're bonding over our mothers. I, no. It was even worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's the thing, though. Again, you're making it play a game that it's not trying to play. Okay. Just put yourself in the place of a 10 year old who's watching an epic battle take place with fairies and trolls and this 10 year old that looks like them that is from Ireland and can surf like it's entertaining, man. It's, you know, it's not supposed to be anything other than just mindless entertainment for a 10 year old. So, OK, I'm fine with saying, yeah, the movie was mindless entertainment for a 10 year old. If that if that's what you're going for in a movie, that's that's the standard right now. Well, that's a really low bar. Because it don't is. you think when they make these movies, they want it to appeal to more than just a mindless 10-year-old? Okay, wait, hold on. If this were to be put on Disney Channel, like the actual proper Disney Channel on cable, like this would be a great movie sitting on Disney Channel. If you go watch like The Descendants or stuff like that, that's geared towards like 8 to 10-year-olds, like those movies are actually like garbage, right? Like no offense to Descendants fans out there, but like, so this is at least a step up from that. And so if... Disney had launched it on Disney Channel instead of Disney Plus, then like nobody would be complaining about it. They pushed it so hard too. I think in the weeks up to the release, I was getting retargeting ads on Goodreads and all kinds of platforms about Artemis Fell. Everyone and their dog on the on the internet was telling me to watch Artemis Fell through Disney ads. So how much money do they spend on this thing? It Holy doesn't cow. matter if the movie was good or not because if you have a Disney Plus subscription, then they win, right? Like, so if, if you get the Disney Plus subscription for a month from this movie because of this movie, they've now, like, succeeded, right? Which is kind of a cynical way of looking at it. Yeah, I mean, that's what they were going for. And honestly, I, I honestly think we need, a, like, a 10-year-old to sit down and watch this movie and tell us if they liked it or not. Because are we suddenly holding, like, the Lizzie McGuire movies or something? Like, that's what this movie is compared to, in my opinion. They go to Paris and have fun and there's nothing to it and whatever. Like that's just how this movie is. And when was the last time you watched the Lizzie McGuire movie? I don't know, man. <laughs> is there, I, I'm probably <laughs> mixing that up for Mary Kate and Ashley movie or something. What's, what's another movie? Like I think Spy Kids was a good comparison. Spy Kids is a good comparison. I don't know about Mary Kate and Ashley and Spy Kids was good. Well, wait, Steven, if you went in back. Yeah, let's go back and watch Spy Kids and see how you like it. That's fair, but also Spy Kids, was Spy Kids marketed this big? I mean, did it come out in theaters? Do we know? It, it might have. I think I actually remember seeing it in theaters. Spy Kids, was it was actually a theatrically released movie. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I probably wouldn't go back and watch Spy Kids now. But I feel like, I guess my main beef is, sure, maybe it was targeted for 10-year-olds and maybe 10-year-olds like it. I don't know. I don't even know if that's true or not. But... Why did they have to go for 10 year olds at the expense of other audiences? I feel like you can make a movie that people of all ages enjoy in their Pixar movies. They produce content that people of all ages enjoy that have, you know, messages for everyone. 
That's and true. Kind of like Jumanji why can we not is a good have example. the same thing here? Yeah, I mean, they could have. And the fact that they sabotaged a book doing this kind of sucks. Yeah, and you want? Do you want me to break down all the ways that this movie yeah. was terrible? Let, let's hear it. You need you need your time in the sun. Let's just get into roasting it because we know that's why everyone's here is to hear us roast this movie. Okay, so question to start off the roast: At what point <laughs> did you realize it was awful? Maybe Ben, you don't answer this question. <laughs> the minute that I saw him surfing, I knew it was awful. And the minute I heard him talk with that weird accent, I knew it was awful. Yeah, what was up with the surfing? I don't know. Look, I, I went to, my wife and I went on a vacation to Ireland like two years ago. And not once did I see anybody surfing. And we went during the summer. And not once did I see, hear anybody talk with anything resembling the accent that anybody used in that movie. And the thing is, is I think Colin Farrell is Irish. Yeah, I honestly didn't have a problem with the accent. But if you're saying it's a problem, I'm totally on board. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just like, yeah, the surfing, is, the surfing is dumb. Before we start the roast, can I just say, my, I think the best character from this was Mulch Jiggums. I honestly think. Yeah, that was a that was a standout character. They nailed him, I think. So, yeah, Mulch is good. Mulch is good in the book franchise as well. And Josh Gad did a good job portraying him. I thought the part where he was giving all the exposition and he was chained up, I thought that was a little cringy. Yeah. But when yeah. he was actually on screen doing stuff, I I was down for some multi jiggums for sure. He was funny. I laughed at some of his lines. Yeah, yeah, there were definitely some funny ones in there. The part with him and the, the the part with him and the goblins I thought was good. And that was a scene directly from the books, so I liked it. I mean, sure, I'm biased towards the books, but I'm also down for retellings in different mediums. I don't want to. I don't want to come across as saying you have to follow the books, but a lot of the decisions they made were bad, such as <laughs> segue. Where to begin? So the villain. The villain was Opal Kobai. What do you guys know about the villain? Zero. Nothing. Nothing. Wow. Yeah. Cool villain. We don't know anything about her. Or him. We don't even know who they are. Like, why Why are they capturing Artemis Sr.? Just because we want the thing. The the Oculus. Ar- Arculus. Whatever well, it's called. Well, hold on. I don't care what it's called because it's ridiculous. It's a MacGuffin. They, they, want to, they want to enslave humanity because humanity has oppressed fairies for forever. Using the power of the thing. Yeah, okay, sure. There's some reason. Yeah, there's a reason. This was a textbook MacGuffin. Like, there is no bigger MacGuffin in any movie that I've ever seen than this. Oh gosh, it was so bad. Because like how did Holly know how to use it? First of all, she said the magic spell, which was actually that's lifted from the book. That was the text of the sacred book of the fairy people that she says, like the carry me always carry me well thing. So yeah, that's cool. But how does she know what it's gonna do? And then they like open the portal and they grab Artemis right like that doesn't make any sense. No, I'm I'm not buying that. Fair. That's a fair criticism. Continue. Also, it was hidden. It was hidden inside the safe, inside the manor the whole time. So what exactly am I to make of this plan here? Artemis is trying to get the Aculus. And in order to do so, he needs Mulch there because Mulch, the dwarf, is going to break into the safe. So Artemis both Using knows and doesn't know <laughs> where that... That's, that's a real thing. Oh, is it? That's I'm like, instead of using his digging capabilities, yeah. he's going to use his, his hair. Okay, fair enough. It's slightly di- it's slightly different, but it's a real thing. So that was cool. But I don't understand. So he doesn't know where it is, but at the same time, his whole plan is to lure Mulch in so Mulch will find it for him and break into the safe. Couldn't he have just figured out how to break into the safe on his own? Well, wasn't there something about in the first book and it, i haven't read the books recently but didn't he need to like cut off a thumb or something to get into a door in that's the third book that's third book yeah okay not not in this this book is a mashup of the first and second books so okay. artemis fowl senior doesn't appear in the first book at all but he's kidnapped in the second book he's actually missing entirely in the first book and then he he's revealed to have been kidnapped in the second book and artemis goes and saves him and in the second book is kind of when he becomes friends with the fairies a little bit in the first book, they're totally at odds. There's no talk of friendship. Holly does uh, cast like a healing spell on his manor to help his mother who has dementia or something like that. But he pays her for that. So there's definitely not this cooperation that you see come out of nowhere that you get in the movie. 
Well, Holly also heals his butler. Yeah, Holly does heal butler in the book, but she does that because butler's cool in the book. (laughs) She recognizes his coolness. He is not cool in the movie. Butler is 0% cool in the movie, which was terrible because they butchered his character. He's so cool in the books. He does zero cool things in the movie. You know who else does absolutely zero anything? Is Butler's niece or whatever that they brought in? Yeah, Juliet. She's supposed to be his younger sister. But yeah, why is she in the movie? What did she do? She had like three lines and brought him a sandwich. She served sandwich. Yeah, sandwich. Sandwich girl. (laughs) Yeah, that's another thing where I'm like, I must have skipped a scene. She has a point in the book. And she actually grows to be a bigger character in later books. So I don't know. Are they planning on doing a movie franchise? Gosh, I hope not. But <laughs> if they are, maybe she was supposed to become a bigger character. Anyway, back to Butler. In the book, Butler dons medieval armor and takes on the troll with medieval weaponry. It's w- it's a way cool scene. And he takes out the troll single-handedly, and, but, di- but like dies or almost dies as a result because he gets gored. And Holly comes and saves him because they've kind of been working together to take out the troll. He does nothing cool at all. And the one and one of the cooler scenes as well was when he takes out the LEP recon squad. But Artemis is like helping him do it. Like what? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And also they destabilize the, the time shield, which is kind of weird because there's no reason for them to do that. It just ended up making more problems for them than than they needed. Yeah. What was the point of the time freeze? There's a really good plot in the book where the time freeze is put into place. It's something the fairies always do in order to protect protect their identities. And yeah, they say the same reasons in the movie. But the whole thing in the book was they also have this thing called the biobomb that will rinse out and kill every living thing. And so they contain it inside a time field. And in the book, Artemis and co escape the time field by forcibly falling asleep. And that also prevents them from being killed by the biobomb. So these different like fairy technologies work out and Artemis actually outsmarts them. But in the book, first of all, they didn't have the biobomb at all because maybe that was too adult to think they were actually killing or kidnapping. But the time thing also doesn't make any sense. There's no point to it in the movie. Well, it was so that he couldn't get a signal out to broadcast their existence. That was the the point of it in the movie. Yeah. He, they, he was like, if you try and come in here, I'll broadcast it out. And then they're like, well, you can't. And he's like, well, I just have to last 28 more minutes. <laughs> or he has to be like, you can't come in here until I die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So th- didn't that sound really ominous where he says no fairy yeah. can enter while I'm still living? And Root like looks over is like, oh, well, you're living, right? Didn't that sound like it'd be something important? <laughs> they didn't even make an book. attempt. So that's super important in the book because they get... They realize, oh, it's a loophole. Artemis made a mistake. He said that we couldn't enter because that's another thing the movie didn't explain. Fairies can't enter somewhere unless they're specifically invited in. Well, I think that that was heavily implied. Implied, sure. It implied it. But the idea was in the book, they say, oh my gosh, we can get in because he implicitly invited us in by saying you can't enter when I'm alive, so you can when I'm dead. So that's why they choose to do the biobomb and it all really falls into Artemis's plan. Great plot. Not at all executed in the movie they just do away with it they 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 have like winks at it but no no real action taken yeah they just make some overtures yeah yeah it's like yeah it's kind of like easter eggs if you've read the book yeah so let's get let's get into some other things first of all you choose to film in ireland and then you only have like one (laughs) set the entire movie in ireland yeah that's like one of the most beautiful places in the world and the backgrounds were like CGI. It was so weird. Like you look at the background of the house and like, I don't even know if it was an actual place. And it just looked like it was all CGI background. I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, to be fair, they did have the other shot outside Terra when they capture Holly. Yeah. So, but that was at night. You couldn't really see anything. Yeah. And the, I mean, the story takes place at the I know, Fowl but, Manor. But if it's you're going to, it's a gonna, movie. If you're going to be like, playing up the ireland thing like when they talk about the book of kells they could have been like zooming in on like the forgetting the place's name but it's really pretty you know like they could have done some things like that to make it actually feel like a little bit more authentic because that was like a big part of the movie yeah yeah and speaking of cgi okay that was it was all terrible like all the vfx in the movie the underground the the fairy realm the fairy realm yeah looks like it was it was 10 years outdated even Josh Gad pulling his mouth open, 
Like, that looks so bad. I didn't think the troll looked very good either. No. It was like they realized halfway through all the VFX stuff that they were just going to put this out on Disney Plus and they just like stopped doing things to make it look better. That's the feeling I got, honestly. Speaking of characters, which characters did you... So we liked Mulch and Butler, we thought could have been good, but they just didn't do anything with him. Juliet, pointless. Artemis was so meh for me. Holly was good. I thought Holly was was pretty well done. Like that was her character. And that was one of the brighter spots for me. But Root and Foley were terrible. They had no chemistry at all. Root, no, 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 no. Root was supposed to be like angry and and just like curmudgeonly or whatever that word is. You know, always upset. First of all, I mean, I'm fine with them changing genders. Root's supposed to be a male fairy. I mean, I would have been fine if Root was a, a girl in the in the movie but she wasn't angry ever like she was always just kind of like the whole time i'll have your badge for this and oh but not in the right ways i never actually believed she was mad i believe she was acting like she was mad but she wasn't really mad i don't know isn't she a pretty famous actress yeah judy judy dench judy dench have you heard that joke that judy dench is adrian must hate her right now because yeah because she was in cats too she was in cats (laughs) and now this so I didn't like, Ru- I didn't like, Ru- I mean, Rue was, I guess she was okay. Yeah. She was like Artemis for me, like very average. I thought the child actors did an okay job. I didn't hate any of the performances from the child actors. The child actors, just Art- Artemis and Julia. Oh, and then, and then, uh, full, then the fairy. Holly. Uh, was Holly a child actor? She yeah. seemed like she was older. No way, man. She looked like, she was like probably, I'll look it up. I never know when I see she's actors. Like 18 to 20. Well, how, would you, how old would you say Artemis is? No, she Artemis, was not 18 to 20. Artemis, I'm guessing, is like 14. Okay, Stephen, any more standout while, while Josh is researching this? Any more standout things that you want to tell us? Yeah, can I, can I just say one more time that Foley was bad? There was no character chemistry. Root and Foley had a, have a great relationship. They're back and forth, joking around. There was nothing like that. Foley was just like frantically trying to get his time shield in place the whole time <laughs> Wham. so she was born 7th november 2003 in dublin ireland so that would put her at how old yeah so so she's 16 16 and a half okay yeah what about artemis basically 18 so i was right 16 i bet artemis is 16 as well lends lends some credence to my artemis holly romance <laughs> crackpot theory that yeah, got gonna, shot down be in a, the book a, review. a few people on discord that disagree with this speaking of which shout out to discord if you really love this movie or if you think that we we did not dislike it enough then let us know on discord yeah i guess we just went right into the the hot movie takes we didn't do our, our typical intro but yeah check us out on discord let us know if you like the movie i really doubt you did though unless you're ben again i think it got a a solid b performance for the game I was trying to play so steven there is in fact it is confirmed to be an artemis foul too Ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh but to push back on the ages a little bit i think that most of the shooting was done a few years ago for the for this movie so he's he's 15 and he was born in dublin ireland too maybe i'm just wrong about these accents but i did not think that they were sounded like an irish accent but both of them were born in dublin so it's weird i work with irish people i hear him pretty often and i didn't i didn't pick up on the accents so i think we can give the accents a pass all right, that's the that's the conclusion of my hot takes about the movie. I've I've ranted enough about all my problems with the movie. Okay, so real fast, can we go around and do a best of the worst? I, I just want to put this out there. Interestingly enough, the filming wrapped and entered post production in June 2018. So that was two years ago now that it wrapped. And why has it taken so long to put it out? There's there's probably stories. I think it, it got pushed back a couple things. Yeah, I'm sure there's some movie politics. Yeah. But also they had two years to come up with those special effects. So, but to be <laughs> fair, she was born in what, 2003? So she was only, she was only like 15 when they filmed this, 14 or 15. Mm-hmm. I guess I've seen so many high school, quote unquote, dramas where the actors are really 20 somethings that I assume everyone's older than they look. Yeah. If you're watching Outlander, or not Outlander, Outer Banks, these are not Outer Banks child actors. Yeah, also, if you're a big fan of One Tree Hill like I am, they're actually older than high school. (laughs) Oh, wow. Okay, guys. Okay, wait. Let's do best of the worst. Worst of the best. No, for this is best of the worst. (laughs) 
because it was all bad. Right. So now we're finding yes, the opposite. one good part. Best of the worst is going to be for me, Mulch Jiggums. I really enjoyed him. I thought Josh Gad did really well. I thought he stayed pretty true to his book character. So my best of the worst. My best of the worst was budget. They like tried to do so much with this movie and some of it like looked really good, but I, I don't know what this budget was. I would guess like over a hundred million dollars and like the best, and this is the best they could come up with. It blows my mind. And in some shots, like things look really cool, but in other ways, it's just like, how did that happen? Maybe renovations to the house that they destroyed cost a lot of money. <laughs> All right, Steven, let's, can you muster one up here? It was $125 million. Where did a hundred? Whoa. What, what oh happened? My gosh. What happened to $125 million to produce this movie? <laughs> there, something must have gone on here. Think about that. The real that... Artemis Fowl came in and stole a bunch of money from him. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, somebody is a, is a criminal mastermind involved in making this movie. I think my best of the worst is just all of the overtures to the book that were there enough to know that they knew what the book was, but <laughs> also enough to know that they didn't know how to turn it into a good movie in of itself. I don't know. Like all these lines, the, the, especially the worst for me was the I'm Artemis Fowl and I'm a criminal mastermind at the end of the book, at the end of the movie. That was so bad. Oh my gosh. Stupid. How mad, how mad were you when you said that? Oh gosh, it was so it was so bad. Like, had you at, just... at that point? I had, no, I had checked out. I mean, I knew that it was bad. I knew it was. I knew it was going to be bad going into it. I really wasn't expecting that much. Is that like when you're watching BYU you lose a football game and they throw one more interception at the very end, and you're like, "Well, that sucks." <laughs> yeah, like any team losing, not specific to BYU. BYU wins football games a lot of the time. So, um, Stephen did not appreciate that shade. <laughs> The other question I have is if you have $125 million, why do you get sunglasses that look like they were bought at the dollar store? Oh, I forgot to mention the sunglasses <laughs> thing. Yeah, that was so stupid because the whole thing is they have to wear the sunglasses. So the mesmer, the fairy magic, they can't you know mesmerize them. That's really basic in kidnapping a fairy. You can't let them see your eyes. And within two interactions with the fairy we've kidnapped, we're taking off our sunglasses to build trust with the fairy. Like, why in the world would Holly not mesmerize him right away? She's just been kidnapped by this kid. And it's a, a human enemy. Like, are you Be- kidding me? Because that she makes was, no sense. She was convinced by his, his his losing his father that he was actually a good person. I don't know, man. I told you. I thought I missed a scene between that. That's like the part where I'm like, I must have missed something. Really fast. Are that was one of the worst things. Are we convinced that like fairies have strong bones? Because... Butler took her out when she was well above the tree line and she fell the whole way down. It's probably like a fly falling. You know, they can f- fall a long way and no harm done. She's also got, I mean, they, they've got those suits on. Fairy technology is really cool. Okay. So they've, got, they've got those suits on that probably absorb contact, whatever. <laughs> okay. Okay. I also thought the end was terrible. The end, when they go pick everyone up, they pick up the gang and the helicopter <laughs> yeah. and they're off for their next adventure. Now they're all friends. What? That was stupid. <laughs> All right. Well, that this has been fun. You know I've who the real this. victim is this? Is the therapist who got told that his chair was a fake. I feel so bad for that dude. That that was the only scene in the movie that I thought that Artemis was an actual like actually intelligent. That was lifted straight from the book material. I liked that. I like that scene. That was yeah, that I was, was when you saw high hopes yeah. for the for the movie. No, I knew going in with the Rotten Tomatoes rating of 11% and everyone saying it was terrible that it wasn't going to be any good. But I also knew I had to watch it because I love the book so much. So I was, I don't know. I didn't, I wasn't really as angry as I made it seem in this podcast. Just more quietly disappointed. Yeah. The, the, I, once again, the light in my eyes is dying <laughs> in this as well as it is in waiting for Doors of Stone to come out. Hey, you know what? For every Artemis Fowl, it seems like we're getting a series of unfortunate events adaption or a golden compass adaption that's like actually turning out good so you know what if there's some swings and misses i'm fine with that as long as it's not a swing and miss on anything i care too much about if we're swinging and missing on wheel of time (laughs) that would be rough this is going to be this is a, a big warning to wheel of time right now yeah don't go the way of artemis fell all right thanks for listening to this rant Yep, we've gone eight minutes over our our intended time. (laughs) All right, hopefully you got something out of that roast. This has been fun. Usually we try to stay more positive. 
So it's fun to just totally trash sometimes. If you like Phantology, check us out at www.phantologybooks.com. On social media, at Phantology Books. Join Discord. Check us out on Patreon. We are literally everywhere. These days, insanely popular. So check out Phantology. <laughs> ben, Josh, thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks, see you. David.